What makes a footballer great? Is it their talent? I tried to base my free kick on Ronaldo. <laughs> Hit the ball by the valve and it moves. Oh! Oh! Their work ethic. Or is it simply being in the right place at the right time? Chelsea Football Club has never lacked for talent. It is a club that has seen legends rise, trophies lifted, and dreams fulfilled. But for all the glory, there is another side to Chelsea's story, a side the fans rarely speak of. Behind every successful team, there are players who never made it, the ones who slipped away, the ones who slipped through the cracks, the ones who, had they stayed, might have changed the course of Chelsea's history. Kevin De Bruyne, Mohamed Salah, Declan Rice, they all wore the blue of Chelsea, but their brilliance was never realized at Stamford Bridge. What if the story had been different? What if Chelsea had held on to these stars? Today, we explore what could have been. This is the story of Chelsea's lost stars, the talent Chelsea let's go, and how their success after Chelsea haunts a club that always demands instant results. This is more than just a tale of transfers gone wrong. This is a look at the cost of chasing success at all costs, because sometimes the price you pay is losing your future. The Chelsea Academy at Skobam is one of the most respected in world football. It is the best place of many dreams, a place where future stars are nurtured, groomed and prepared for the highest level. For years, Chelsea invested heavily in youth development, hoping to craft the next generation of footballing greats. And yet, despite its success in producing talents, many of the academy's brightest graduates never donned the blue shirt of Chelsea for long. For every John Terry or Missing Mount, there is the Declan Rice or Kevin De Bruyne. Why? Why does a club with such a powerful youth system lose its brightest prospects. Tim got the contact. Kevin De Bruyne, that is an absolute beauty. For me, he's been the best player in the Premier League for the last four or five years. De Bruyne to Haaland, it's becoming a cliche because it's happening time and time again. He's probably the most talented player in the league. Kevin De Bruyne arrived at Chelsea in 2012, fresh from Genk, where he had already shown glimpses of his brilliance. His vision, his passing range, his ability to dictate the tempo of a game, it was all there. But at Chelsea, he was never given the platform to showcase his talent. Kevin De Bruyne made only a handful of appearances at the club. It established stars already in the team. Jose Mourinho, known for his focus on immediate success, saw De Bruyne as a long-term project. But Chelsea wasn't in the business of waiting. In a club built on winning today, there was little room for developing in the stars of tomorrow. Kevin De Bruyne was loaned out to Werder Bremen after a promising preseason. But by the time he returned, the club had already decided that his future laid elsewhere. He moved to Wolfsburg, followed, and there he blossomed into one of the most creative midfielders in Europe. His performances caught the attention of Manchester City and the rest, as they say, is history. Today, Kevin De Bruyne is the engine of Manchester City's dominance. He is a player Chelsea could have built their future around. But in the high-pressure environment of Stamford Bridge, time was not on his side. In January 2014, Chelsea signed a young Egyptian winger from Basel, Mohamed Salah, a man who had tormented Jose Mourinho time and time again with his quick and dynamic pace, scoring crucial goals against Chelsea in Europe. 
Salah had the tools to succeed at Chelsea. But like Kevin De Bruyne, Salah found himself competing with established stars like Eden Hazard, William, and Oscar. Opportunities were limited, but when they came, they were brief. Salah's speed and flair was undeniable. Scoring the sixth goal in Chelsea's dominant win against Arsenal in Arsene Wenger's 1000th game in charge. No flag here against Mohamed Salah for his first Chelsea goal. He's done it. But this young talent was raw, and in his squad fighting for immediate results, the chains was a rare commodity. In the season where Chelsea fought for the title, Salah was not a priority. And I was there with Salah, he was young, probably an early stage in his career. Didn't work for him, he went away and did well. It's very hard, Chelsea have got an abundance of talent in those positions at that time. Frustrated Mohamed Salah was sent out on loan to Italy. First to Fiorentina, then to AS Roma. It was in Serie A where Salah truly came into his own. He developed a sharper finishing touch, a more refined game, and became one of the most lethal attackers in Europe. But it wasn't until his move to Liverpool that the world saw the full potential of Mohamed Salah. Salah doesn't have anything to work with there, but he somehow kept the ball. Incredible feat by Mohamed Salah, and he goes on! The Egyptian king became a Premier League record breaker, a Champions League winner, and one of the best forwards in the world. Made it what a finish! But for Mo Salah, it was an absolute steal, and he'll go down as not just one of the greatest players to ever play for Liverpool, but I think one of the greatest players we've ever seen in the Premier League. Mohamed Salah could have been Chelsea's, but instead, he became their opponent's greatest weapon. Salah will go on to score against Chelsea time and time again, famously scoring a cracker in a two-new win against Chelsea at Anfield. He goes for goal! Oh my word! Phenomenal! Where does Mo Salah stand in and where is he rate in the world rankings right now? Top, but in the moment, I think uh, it's clear there's nobody better than him. Not all stories of lost stars involve established first-team players. Declan Rice's journey is one of youthful promise. Unfulfilled at Chelsea, but realised elsewhere. Declan Rice gets on the score sheet for West Ham. I think Declan's improved as much as any player over the last one or two seasons that I've looked at him. I think he was way ahead of me where I was at 22. As a boy, Rice joined Chelsea's academy at the age of seven, dreaming of following in the footsteps of legends. He spends years honing his craft, learning the game and preparing for the big stage. But in 2014, at the age of 14, Chelsea made a decision that would haunt them. Declan Rice was released from the academy, deemed surplus to requirements. It was a decision that crushed the young midfielder but didn't break him. Just across London, at West Ham United, Rice was given a second chance. At West Ham, Declan Rice developed into one of the best holding midfielders in the Premier League. A natural leader, he became the heartbeat of his team, leading them in European competitions and establishing himself as an England first team regular. Harry Kane blocked again. Declan oh. Rice rams it into the goal. As his stock rose, so did speculation about a return to Chelsea surfaced, but the damage was done. Declan Rice, the player Chelsea had let go, had become the captain they desperately needed. Declan Rice would later go on to play for Arsenal, with Mikel Ateta citing him as a key player needed to claim the Premier League title for Manchester City. He would go on to score an outstanding goal against Chelsea in a 2-2 draw at Stamford Bridge in 2023. Oh, what a finish! What a finish by Declan Rice! At the heart of these stories lies a common theme, Chelsea's culture of immediate success. Since Roman Abramovich's takeover, Chelsea has become a club 
defined by its relentless pursuit of trophies. This win now mentality has brought silverwares, Champions League titles, Premier League triumphs, FA Cups, but it has also come at the cost. Managers at Chelsea are really giving time to build for the future. The pressure to deliver results has led to a high turnover of coaches and a reliance on established and experienced players. For young talents like Kevin De Bruyne, Mohamed Salah and Declan Rice, this environment can be unforgiving. Jose Mourinho's reign, for example, was built on a foundation of quick fixes. Players like De Bruyne and Salah were seen as promising but not ready for immediate demand of top-level football. And in the pursuit of trophies, Chelsea lets these future stars slip through their fingers. But has Chelsea learned from its past mistakes? In recent years, the club's approach to youth development started to shift. Under managers like Frank Lampard and Thomas Tuchel, the focus on nurturing homegrown talents became stronger than ever before. Missing Mount, Rich James, Tammy Abraham, and many others represented a new era for Chelsea. An era where young players aren't just part of the squad, but key to the club's success. These academic graduates are not merely filling gaps. They are leading the team in pivotal moments earning the trust of both managers and fans alike. The success of these players is a testament to the fact that when given the time and the opportunity, Chelsea's youth can flourish. The lessons of De Bruyne, Salah and Rice have left their mark on the club, pushing it to value its own talent pipeline more than ever before. No longer is the academy just a feeder for loans or transfers. It's becoming a key part of the club's success. But the real question still remains. Will Chelsea stick to the philosophy that helped them during Frank Lampard's tenure? Or will the new ownership on that third bully continue to sell players from the academy? Or will history repeat itself with small future superstars slipping through Chelsea's grabs? Hudson Adoy is receiving again in this channel. For now, the future looks brighter under Enzo Maresca. Chelsea has seen what happens when potential is nurtured and what happens when it is let go too soon. The rise of Mason Mount, Rich James, Tammy Abraham, Fikayo Tomori, and many others gives the fans hope that the lessons of the past could be learned. But only time will tell if the Chelsea of tomorrow will be the one that finally embraces the greatness it has right in front of it. Because sometimes, success isn't just about winning today, it is about building for the future. And perhaps, for Chelsea, the future could finally arrive. <laughs>